Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this ICM Krupp L2H143 KFZ-70 German Light Army Truck, which might just be one of the catchiest names for anything ever. It just rolls right off the tongue. Okay, that might have been sarcasm. I believe this thing is also known as the Protze? 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 I have no idea how to say that, so I will try to refrain from doing so. Anyway, this is a 172nd scale plastic kit. It's also the first ICM model that I've built. I saw that it was discounted and I figured, why not? Who doesn't like discounted models? Me? You don't count. There's nothing on the back of this box, so let's just not bother looking. Cool? Cool. Inside the box is another box. Inside this box is two plastic sprues, and a separate part for the truck's hood or bonnet or whatever you might want to call it. This part does look pretty decent, though obviously it's going to need a bit of cleanup. Actually, I would say that for pretty much all of the parts in this kit. They don't look too bad, but there are plenty of bits of flashing and mould lines around the place. It's not like it's going to take 7,000 hours to clean up, but it is obviously there. There's a bunch of really nice looking very fine parts, which is good, but the downside of those is they are very easy to break. And break some of them, I did. My best advice for this is to be very careful with the fine bits. That's probably kind of obvious, isn't it? Most of the plastic here is pretty good and the detail is nice, so I can't complain too much. There's a decal sheet included, with not a huge amount of markings, but it does look like you could build four of these trucks and still have different number plates. So that's nice. I have no idea about the quality of these decals, and maybe one day I'll find out. On the other side of the decals, there's some clear plastic with a rectangle printed on it, which is intended as window glazing. Probably best left off until after painting. And of course there are instructions. These aren't too bad, though I do recall there being a couple of times where I found things a bit unclear. That's probably at least half my fault though. I did manage to get the truck put together using them, so they can't be that bad, right? As is often the case, a basic painting guide is included. Looks like this truck is going to be grey. Big surprise. Time to start building. I start with the front wheels. This involves slotting the, well it's not an axle, but the name escapes me. The part goes into the wheel, and it's shaped such that it would be very easy to have the wheels turned however you might like. I think that's kind of cool, though it does make putting these parts together a bit fiddly, and you have to pay attention to how they're positioned. Misaligned steering wheels aren't safe. Once those are together, I add the rim and hubcap parts. This is pretty simple. A bit less simple is the steering bar, or whatever you might call it. I found it kind of fiddly to install, even though in theory it's just gluing a bar between one point and the other. I got there eventually though, and everything looks more or less straight. Good enough for me anyway. I'm not going to measure it or anything like that. Then I add the rim parts for the rest of the wheels, which is really simple. Ha ha ha! The good original wheelie joke. I suppose I could have put the rims for the spare wheels onto those at this point as well, but I didn't. So we end up with four of these, which makes sense because there are four rear wheels. Now for the rear suspension. I have to say, this is the second most fiddly and annoying part of the model. The first most annoying being actually getting these into place. We need to attach these little bracing parts, I guess you might call them. There is one of these for above and below the axle on each side of the main part. The upper and lower parts are different. Visibly different, so you shouldn't have too much trouble telling them apart. After quite a bit of fiddling, we end up with these, and you need to make two of these. I leave those to set for a bit and attach these sets of leaf springs to the inside of the frame. This is pretty simple, a nice change from the previous assembly. And then it's time to attach the rear wheel suspension things. This was annoying, as I previously alluded to. The central part doesn't really fit in between the frame parts, and it's quite hard to get the little drive shafty bits into the holes in the differential part, or I assume that's a differential anyway. I'm not a truck scientist. This was so annoying and was taking so much time that I ended my stream and didn't touch the model again for a fairly long time. Eventually I came back to it, and as you can see I have different paint stains on my fingers. I do have the parts on the frame. It isn't a perfect fit, but it is done. 
So it's time to get the rest of the truck built. I attach these suspension-y, springy whatever they are's, which go between the frame and the two ends of the axle parts. I was careful here, mostly because I didn't want to damage those axle parts. It is just a bit delicate. Next I install the bottom of the engine. Or is this the bottom of the transmission? I don't know, again I'm not a truck surgeon. This is simple enough though. The drive shaft and boxy thing can then be glued onto that, and the entire assembly can be installed on the frame. There isn't anything to guide this precisely, but you can see when it's sitting right. I did manage to knock that drive shaft off while doing this, but I did put it back on later so that's okay. There's no need to panic. Then I figured it makes sense to install the truck's hood part. This is pretty easy to slot into place. I did have to apply a bit of pressure to reduce gaps, but the fit is pretty decent. Next I install the front wheels and associated bits. This is kind of delicate to do, as you might guess by looking at it. The guides for this might as well not exist, but a bit of eyeballing and some nudging, and the parts are in what looks like a reasonable place to me. And then why not attach the rear wheels? These aren't too hard to install, they more or less just slot right onto the axley bits. There was a fair bit of play here, but I got them to where they looked reasonable. I would strongly suggest to avoid applying pressure here unless you want to destroy those fiddly little suspension-y axley bits. Now it's time to assemble the rear compartment. This is pretty simple, and the parts are shaped such that they should be pretty obvious if they're not lined up properly. I started by gluing the forward wall on. Then the right wall, though I don't suppose the sequence in which you add them really matters. Then comes the rear wall, which has the lowered section. And finally, the left section. This did of course need a bit of nudging and fiddling, but it's not too hard to get all of the bits lined up nice and neat. And now for some seating. If we don't provide seating, the crews might write angry letters. And we don't want that. I started with the backrests for the front seats. I don't know why I started with the backrest, but I did. I'm sure there was a reason. Next comes the cushion where the butts go, and this is pretty easy to put into place. Putting the backrest in first doesn't seem to have caused any issues. I then install the rear seats. These look to be a bit less comfortable than the ones in the front, but the soldiers or cargo are much less likely to write angry letters, so this is what they get. No backrests here. Controls for the vehicle are probably an important thing to include. I add gear sticks, which are pretty fiddly, even when using tweezers. Highly unlikely I could have got those into place with my fat fingers. There's a steering wheel too. I think I've got this into more or less the right place. I then add the front bumper. This is pretty much just gluing the bumper onto a smaller sub bumper, I guess you might call it. And it did require a bit of nudging to get into the right spot, but into the right spot it did go, more or less. It's probably not perfect, but it looks right. It looks like you could bump stuff with that pretty good. Headlamps are next. I'm pretty sure these were meant to go into place before installing the hood part, but hey, messing up is just what I do. I think I got them into place pretty well anyway. They're not perfect, but they'll do the job. Then I add a convoy light. You don't want to be that one jerk in the convoy without a convoy light, do you? Of course you don't. Obviously I did need to do a bit of nudging to get this on properly, but that's no big deal. Next I glue this set of planks or whatever they are to the side of the rear compartment. I'm not entirely sure what this is for, but I suspect it could be additional walls for high loads or maybe ramps or something. Surely somebody knows, but that somebody is not me. There's one of these for either side. The same goes for the spare wheels. These go on easily enough, and obviously at some point I added the rim parts. Then come these triangular box things whatever they are. Some sort of stowage maybe for the crew's personal items or something. A little knife nudging and they're on. The windshield comes next, or at least the frame for it anyway. This should fit nicely between the two knobs on either end of the front wall of the cab. It's easy enough to glue in, and if you wanted to make the painting a bit more annoying to do, or you want to paint the windows instead of having clear glazing, you could glue in the clear plastic part that I showed you earlier. Obviously I haven't. To finish the model we add some tools, starting with the shovels. These go onto the left side of the rear section. There's nothing to guide these, which is nice if you would prefer to leave them off. In that case there would be no holes to fill, but I'm putting them on. 
What I did was position them and then add glue. I nudge them a bit if needed and then they're on. This is pretty much the same way I installed all of the tools, like the axe on the rear, though maybe I used a bit too much glue there. The axe on the right side received a more sensible amount of glue, not that it really matters that much with extra thin, you won't see it once it's primed. And finally, this large pick, for when you need to pick things or something. Anyway, the Krupp Protze in 172nd scale from ICM is now completed. Well, mostly completed anyway. I did omit the exhaust pipes that should be on the underside, mostly because I broke them while trying to clean them up, but I figured it's on the underside and won't be very visible at all. Maybe it could be explained away as somebody driving the vehicle a bit carelessly and ripping the exhausts off. Maybe it just doesn't really matter. Cue the angry completionist smashing away at their keyboard in the comments section. I'm not going to say it's the best model I've ever built, but I am fairly satisfied with it. The result anyway. It's not too bad. I didn't enjoy parts of the construction, namely the rear suspension assembly. That sucked. But it has ended up being a reasonable looking model. I do think this kind of truck is pretty interesting looking. And I do have another one in 148th scale to build, complete with a gun that it can tow. And I am excited to eventually get my hands on the Rubicon offering in 28mm scale too. I guess if you really want to see those, let me know in the comments. I mean, I am going to build them eventually, but if you want to see them, I'll do it sooner. This was my first ICM kit, and I have to admit, the suspension annoyance is almost enough to put me off. But I think that's probably not the best attitude. I'm not going to run out and buy a bunch of them, but I will try some more of their kits in the future. I mean, this one hasn't turned out too bad at all, all things considered. And one day in the distant future, when it gets painted, I think it'll look pretty decent. It was a bit fiddly to build, but not the most tricky kit in the world, I'm sure. Also, as I mentioned earlier, this took me two streams to build. Even if I didn't give up on it at the end of the first stream, it still would have taken two sessions anyway. So it wasn't the quickest thing to put together, but it wasn't that time consuming, so you could probably get it done pretty quick. Speaking of streams, if you want to watch me build these things live, come by my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp or follow the convenient link in the description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or if you want me to answer them on my fortnightly Q&A series, Ask a Herpaderpaderp, put your questions in the appropriate section on Discord. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. Links to all of my things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.